Welcome to part two. If you ended up here without going to part one, please watch part one first. For those that are continuing, we are now going to set up phone integration. So let's come over here to the left under phone integration in our agency view. High level uses something called lead connector phone, which means that for all of your customers, clients, you can now use their phone system to text message, receive text messages, make phone calls and so on. So what we want to do is enable all of that, not only for our account, but for all of our sub accounts. So go ahead and click this button over here. And now that's going to enable the ability for any of your sub accounts that you create down the line to have phone integration, where you can purchase a phone number, costs usually like a dollar a month basically, and then you can set it up to an AI agent that can make phone calls for you, receive phone calls and so on. And then let's move on. Let's focus on setting up our sub account now. Let's go over to this right here, hit drop down, go over to your sub account. And the way sub accounts work is each sub account you create is one of your clients. So for an electrician that hires you, you're going to create their own sub account. Another plumber, let's say, you're going to create their sub account. And that sub account is its own environment for your client. They can log into that sub account. They can communicate with their customers. They can edit their website if they wanted to. They can update their products and packages. And then for your services, you can charge and maybe manage their website or manage their automation. But your client has the ability to log in through your portal that you're going to give them into their sub account and operate within that environment. So for your agency, you're going to have a sub account as well. And that's the one we're going to set up now. So in your sub account, let's go down here to settings and then business profile. And then let's plug in some of this information. So for your business logo, let's go ahead and throw in a logo there. This is going to help with branding. For example, emails that get sent out, you'll have a logo on that email. Your business name, this is a friendly name where it just goes by a particular name, but the legal business name is the one that might be on your IRS documentation, for example, and maybe it's something like this. And you can certainly create your LLC like we talked about, but then in order to do taxes for your company, you need to have what's called an EIN number as well. So let's go and create that real quick. So open up a new tab and go to irs.gov. And in here, prominently right in the middle, it says apply for EIN. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see apply for an EIN and then begin application now. This is a six part process, very simple. Pick LLC in the beginning, like I mentioned, and then continue all the way through filling in your information. And at the end, it's completely free. It's going to give you a number. It'll be like two numbers, dash, and then some more numbers. That number is what you're going to use to file your taxes at the end of the year. And if you need it to register, let's say on certain websites. So just keep that safe and handy. And now you have an EIN number. Let's come back over to the sub account and let's continue filling out the rest of this. Your branded domain is what your media, for example, emails and such will have your branded domain on it. So this will be something like a sub account. So we can say something like branded.soniccombinator.com. And then you can add that domain and it'll give you just like it did before the DNS record. You're going to take these DNS records and plug them into your registrar. If you purchase your domain on high level itself, you can click verify records and it may do it automatically for you. If not, same process as we did last time, copy your DNS record, go over to your registrar under domains, new DNS record, and add it there. Next up, if you have a business website, we don't have one yet, we didn't create it. Your business niche, now let's see if they have something like marketing. They certainly do, let's pick that one. And then currency, whichever currency you prefer. I prefer US dollars. We don't want to create an API key yet, that'll come much later. And then business type, I recall we set up LLC. Let's go ahead and do that business industry, you might be online or media, whichever one you prefer. I'll go with online registration ID type. This is where an EIN will be handy. So inside the USA, if you have an EIN, you can plug it right here. So it'll typically be like two digits dash and then something like that. So I'll just leave that there for now as a placeholder. And then we are operating within the USA and Canada and hit update information. Let's go over to the right. Address should be pre-filled. If not, go ahead and fill that in. Time zone is super important. This is your time zone that you operate in because all of your calendars, your appointments, any kind of coordination that's happening with folks that may be in different time zones, it's all gonna be based on your time zone. So when you say 9 a.m. Eastern in the West Coast, it's 6 a.m. Pacific. So make sure your time zone is correct. The language preference, you can plug that in as well. And outbound communication language. We only have the two options right now. Let's go ahead and pick English, hit update and then authorized representative for your company. So go ahead and put your own information in here and our email, I think we're gonna go with Gmail, job position, whatever you wanna be, CEO, CFO, general counsel. Well, don't be a lawyer, 
but just say maybe CEO and then your phone number and update information. Okay, down here, looking for allow duplicate opportunity settings. You can merge your Facebook contacts by name. So when folks are communicating with you through Facebook Messenger and the AI agent picks up their contact information like first name, for example, it'll update your high level sub account. So you'll have their contact information saved. Verifying email address here is great when you're emailing, let's say, a large amount of email addresses that you found in different directories. This ensures that email address is a legitimate email address. It first tests whether that email address is good to go and then sends the email, reducing your bounce rate. Because if you have too high a bounce rate, you can impact your credibility of your domain and internet service providers will actually blacklist your domain from being able to send any emails. So very important, go ahead and check that. And then always have an unsubscribe button at the bottom of your email. It is regulation, so leave that checked by default. And then allowing duplicate contacts is could be an issue because let's say you create a contact within one sub account and then in a separate sub account you create that same contact maybe it's two different services but you have different phone numbers for each one or different email addresses so high level has a way to basically let you know that hey this user has already been created within your agency anywhere across any of these sub accounts do you want to just import that same user identity into multiple sub accounts makes life a little bit easier next let's work on email addresses so now we want to be able to send emails to and from our customers. And so let's go over to email services on the left. This pops up right here asking if you want to create a separate domain dedicated for your sub account in order to send and receive emails. Since we already have an email address with our agency, you don't need to create a dedicated one here. So we can go ahead and hit X. And you can see that we already have send.lcmsgsndr.net. In your case, if you set up your DNS records correctly, you would have your own domain listed here. Next up, let's go over to reply and forward settings, second tab over. And this is where you can do forwards and replies, meaning as emails are being sent out or coming back in, you can have a completely separate email mailbox, for example, Gmail, where you are working your emails from. So replies, let's say when emails come in, for example, they'll be forwarded to your Gmail account. You'll also get your emails within your conversation tab, which is over here where emails and text messages and everything happens within one window. Very simple, easy to follow. And then at the same token, you can have reply addresses go to a particular domain as well. So for example, let's say you email blasted a thousand people and then everyone is responding. Maybe you don't want the emails to come into the same email address you sent the emails from. You can have those responses go to your Gmail account or maybe you have a dedicated mailbox where you want to sort through the emails yourself or have automation do it for you. So you can dedicate an address where those emails are going to come back to. Whichever one you decide, hit save on both of those. I'm going to leave them blank for now. Email analytics is pretty nice because it tells you how many emails you've sent, how many delivered, and then also from the user's perspective, whether they opened your email or not, which is nice. And then also if they clicked on a link within that email. So it gives you the complete email journey, which is really nice. Complaint is if somebody reported you, let's say for spam. Bounced is if you had a email address that was incorrectly formatted or just a email address that doesn't exist, that would be bounced. And then folks that unsubscribe, they hit the button at the bottom and then failed for whatever reason. These three over here are going to impact your domain reputation that we were talking about. So it's important to make sure that you're not just email blasting thousands and thousands of people because eventually your reputation is going to drop and then ISPs will just block your domain. Okay, so that's email. Let's go over to Stripe integration. So for every sub account that we have, we want to make sure it can collect funds by itself, do invoices by itself. So in your agency sub account, you also need Stripe integration. So let's go back here and go to payments. And then on the top right, you should have a drop down that automatically asks you. You can say connect your payment provider and then say connect now. And then this page should look familiar because we just did this in part one, but now you're doing it for your subdomain. Hit connect, connect with Stripe, and then log into your Stripe account. It should connect you automatically. So let's try this real quick. And here we are. So this is asking me for my six digit verification code in the Authenticator app. This is an app that you would download called Authenticator. So go to your app store or Google store and download an app called Authenticator. And you hit the plus sign to create a new account and you select Stripe and then Stripe will give you a QR code that you scan on their website, which now starts giving you these codes every 60 seconds. And when it says you need to authenticate with that app, you have to plug in this code that you're getting from the app. And if you put in the correct code, that lets Stripe know that you are who you say you are. 
and then you can select whichever account you have with Stripe and go ahead and connect it. For added security, it is nice to have multi-factor authentication. And so you can see I have both modes set up, live mode, which means actual money is going to and from, and test mode, which is fake money, where if I just want to set up maybe a test payment to make sure that the transaction process is working, I can do a test account as well. So I'm connected. I'm going to leave that as it is. So one powerful tool with high level is the ability to create snapshots and share snapshots and then import snapshots as well. This means that any work that I've done so far in building this agency, I can now share the exact configurations with you and you can pick up exactly where I am right now. Maybe somebody wants to share a website with you or you built a nice little automation you want to share with your community. It's a great way to share what's already done. So for example, in here, if I was to share this agency view with you, I would come over here on the left side under agency, account snapshots, and then go ahead and create a new snapshot, give it a name, and then pick the, the sub account that I'm creating the snapshot of. So everything I've created in Sonic Combinator so far, I gave it a name, hit next. And then it brings me to the screen where I can select what areas within that agency I'm comfortable sharing. So maybe if there's something personal in here, I don't want to share that, that's fine. But if there are workflows, automations, pipelines, any kind of links, folders, websites, blogs, all of that can now be shared. And I can say select all and hit proceed. And so what I can do is hit the three dots on the right and say share snapshot, get a permanent link or a one time share link, meaning it's only going to work for one person. So other people can't reshare this. I can email the share link as well. But I'm just going to create a permanent link for now and then say get link. And now this link right here is what I can give to you, for example, and then you can import this directly into high level having this exact agency view. Let's go to new tab, paste that link, and you're going to come to this and it says, yes, import now, because we're importing the snapshot now into our high level. And there you go. If you're doing this on a new browser or for the first time, it may ask you to log in if you have a high level account. If you don't have a high level account, it'll ask you to create one. But as soon as you do, it'll import the snapshot. And now you should have a sub account for that particular and away you go. Time saved. Now the agency snapshot that I'm going to share with you is going to be my actual snapshot that I use day in and day out. So I'll share two versions of it with you. One is the default setup. It'll still have all my information in it, but it won't look like this. And then I'll share another one that'll look a little bit fancier like this. So if you're going to show it to clients or make videos like this, you can. And the only thing that made this happen is the CSS code that I plugged in here. So I'll share this code with you as well if you want to just play around with it and make your own agency look a little bit fancier. And you can certainly use large language models to build you out something nice. The only caution I would give you is this tends to make the interface a little bit slower. And so if you're not totally comfortable with high level yet, avoid doing any kind of customization like this. But I will share both versions with you if you want. So let's go see how we are getting clients to sign up for our service. How do we actually sell? With that, we have a funnel. You go over to your sub account. My sub account is called Sonic Solutions. Yours is called whatever we named it earlier. Go down to sites. And then this one should already be pre-populated for you. Go ahead and click Sonic Solutions Sales Funnel. And the way the funnel works is you have a home screen where customers will land on. That'll be a website URL you share with them. Mine is called elevate.sonicsolutions.com. And then when they land on that page, that funnel based on the information you have should guide them all the way to a checkout page. Click into. And then that allows them to purchase your products and whatever packages you have set up and the prices, enter their credit card information, finish the transaction, and then that leads them to a thank you page. You'll also have a privacy policy terms and conditions page for somebody to click into, and that helps you meet compliance for phones and automation. So let's take a look at what this funnel looks like. Go up to home, click on that, and click this button right here to view page. So now when customers land on elevate.sonicsolutions.com, they see something like this. And the funnel part is how we're guiding the users to read through, click on learn more, read through all the way down, look at our social media and be guided to the packages that we're selling. Now, these packages are going to be specific to you. Remember, based on your level of skill experience and then whatever you feel comfortable charging folks. What I found is really helpful is when you don't have a setup fee for customers, it makes it really easy. The barrier of entry is taken down. And customers are more apt to sign up when you say, hey, we're waiving the setup fee. And you could put a little time crunch on that to say, we're waiving the setup fee just for this week. It expires on Friday, for example. Gives them a little sense of urgency because the original cost would have been a few thousand dollars just to get in. They're still paying you. They're going to pay you for the hosting fee. 
and also the maintenance fee of setting everything up. So that first month is really a subscription fee, but you, either way you're getting money, which makes it a little bit easier for the sale. If customers have questions, you do have a chat bot down here as well included. So customers can click on that. This chat bot is backed by an AI agent that is trained on all of the information within your funnel and your main website. So it can answer any questions that you could in real time. And then to further break down some barriers, you'll have some frequently asked questions in here. Is this affordable? Can this AI agent really replace my customer service? All of the common questions that are typically asked by customers. And then if they want, they can email you as well down here. And then we have terms and conditions to make it all compliant. Let's go back. Let's take a look at the checkout page as well. Now this will all be included. So you won't necessarily need to make many changes to this, but just know that the packages are going to be specific to you and your Stripe integration should be what's plugged in here. So you're getting the money and not my account. You can't mess that up either because Stripe is going to make you re-verify when you import this. Okay, inside the checkout page, this is what it looks like. Get started today. You'll have your own company name up here. You'll have your company logo over here. To change this, you click on it. You go over to the right and say images. Upload the image you want, so for your logo. And then click on the image or double click it. It'll import it automatically and replace this logo with yours. So the customer would fill this information out, standard checkout process, and then the packages that you had set up under products are what are gonna show up over here. And then they can check out, and then they go straight to the thank you page. And it looks like this. And now as soon as somebody purchases, the automation is gonna send you an email, so then you can reach out to that customer immediately and start setting up onboarding for them. Now that we talked about how to sell, you have your funnel set up, you also need a phone number to communicate with your customers as well. So let's talk about setting up a phone number and then some automation with that as well. If you wanna try your hand at doing this yourself instead of just watching, you can use my high-level affiliate link in the description below. If you use that, you get an extended 30-day high-level trial, hundreds of pre-built AI agents, access to my school community, 40-plus business and marketing courses that I've built. You'll have all of my website template that you've seen me create. I'll even hop on a live Zoom call with you twice a week to help guide you and build your business with you. You'll have a direct line to me and also a chance to join my agency and run some of these businesses that I have as well as take on my client. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.